Alright, so I'm not even sure if I'll make an intro, because I'm sure almost everyone already knows what's up by the title. But yeah, more useless bluey facts. Here we go! So in the last installment, we mentioned that Magic was the lowest rated episode on IMDb. However, this record is now held by Tina, another season 3 episode followed by the animated short Humpty Dumpty, Wild Girls, and now Magic. Also, Tina itself barely beats out Magic, with an absolutely abysmal, and totally not decent, 7.2. On the other end though, while writing this, the second highest rated episode is Cricket, the 127th best is Burger Shop, and Granny Mobile was 12th. In the episode Granny Mobile, Bandit can be seen looking at a cigarette tray. This implies that smoking canonically exists in the Bluey universe, and that Bandit, or possibly another family member, may partake in it. On the topic of Bandit though, in the episode Puppets, he tells Bluey not to chew with her mouth open, and this isn't the first time he's had to remind her, as he also reminds her not to talk while eating in the episode Asparagus. Both of which, funny enough, involve pretend animals and ensuing chaos as a result. Also, in the episode Puppets, Bandit's character Unicorse refers to Bluey and Bingo as Salad Dodgers, a nickname very similar to a game he plays in a pilot from 2016, with the game itself appearing to be a parody of the popular mobile game, Fruit Ninja. And while discussing the pilots in general, both Bluey and Bingo saw a reduction in spots on their backs compared to their final versions, with Bluey going from 6 to 3, and Bingo going from 3 to 1. Hey everyone, uh, apologies for the interruption, but just now I was editing the scene you just saw in the video, and I was looking through scenes of the pilot to use as visuals, and I just noticed that in this one shot right here, Bingo actually has four spots instead of three. I thought this was a mistake on my end, but I went to another scene and she does in fact have three. So, I guess the spots are inconsistent in the pilot, and I guess that's a bonus fact for y'all. But anyways, back to the original video. And in a 2017 pilot made for the final show, the intro actually uses older versions of the characters from the previous pilot, two of which include Rusty and Mackenzie, who don't even actually appear in the 2017 pilot, but did appear in the first one. And speaking of Rusty, he himself remains as the most unchanged character appearance-wise, with his current design being virtually identical to his appearance in the pilot, apart from only a small general change in art style. However, one surprising thing that did happen though was the reveal of his siblings, with one of them being his younger sister Dusty, who, despite officially debuting in the episode Cricket, was actually first revealed in a listing for the then upcoming book, Bluey and Friends Little Library, which in itself is more or less a sequel or spin-off to the original Little Library set, which features books about the Healer family instead. <laughs> But on the topic of books, if you go to exactly page 21 of the Bluey 5 Minute Stories book, you can find this hilarious image of Bandit being tortured by his kids calling for him. Also, the 16th word of the book, excluding the titles, publisher info, copyright information, and table of contents, is family. Upon checking my statement, I lied. It's actually the 13th. But, the 66th word, in case you were wondering, is Stripe. I lied again, it's actually the 63rd. However, outside of that, if you were to go to page 8 of the Where's Bluey book, you can see a side of Mackenzie's dad being utterly horrified by Bandit's barbecuing. Speaking of sights though, the glasses Nana wears in Fairy Tale and other episodes are actually different. But on the subject of Nana, there are two parents in Bluey that are implied to hit their kids, with the first being Nana in Fairy Tale, and yeah, they do mention it like a thing of the past, but Rusty's mom is also implied to do something similar, as she chases Rusty with a slipper after he accidentally hits her dishes in Cricket. Speaking of fragile objects, in the Bluey game Bluey Let's Play, a fishbowl can be seen inside of the healer's house. This means that, believe it or not, the family actually has a pet fish. 
And in the same Bluey game, if you summon Pat onto the stage, there is a chance he will make this very strange face. On the discussion of strange things, however, in the episode Kids, we can see what appears to be a playset of the healer's house, meaning that Bluey toys exist in the Bluey universe? Which is sort of weird. Like, imagine going to the store and just seeing a random toy with your house and face on it. That would actually be awesome and kinda creepy. Also, the chocolate milk at the grocery store is $7. And in the toy section, we can see a set of emoji plushies. This implies that emojis exist in the Bluey universe, and also knowing how their world works, that a version of that emoji movie probably does as well. A truly terrifying reality. But speaking of toys, in the episode The Quiet Game, we can see a toy similar to Muffin's Cat Squad bike, albeit with less details and features, which I don't find that surprising as Muffin would probably own the premium version. Also, in a scene from that episode, you can find Jack's mom and sister Lulu in the background. And speaking of Jack, in the episode Explorers, the tuft of fur on Jack's head goes down when he wears a cap instead of inside it, which I have to admit is kind of a fun detail. And in the same episode, we also find out that the character Maynard owns, or at least works at, a small roadside shop called Bait and Tackle. Honestly, this makes sense, as Maynard seems to be pretty passionate about fishing, to the point that in the episode Granddad, he literally owns a fishing-themed trophy and mug. Now that's how you know he's serious about it. And speaking of the episode Granddad, we can see Bluey and Bingo eating out of colored lunchboxes, very similar to the ones they carry to school in the episode Daddy Drop-Off. And while on this topic, it should be noted that Bandit intentionally puts gluten-free products in the purple one. And with Bluey using the purple one in Granddad, this implies that Bluey may not be able to consume gluten products. This in itself is a contrast to what many fans initially believed, as many assumed that Bingo was the one who ate gluten-free products. With one early theory suggesting that this is how she became ill in the episode, Bumpy and the Wise Old Wolfhound. Speaking of which, this one not only has the longest title of any Bluey episode, but in one of the scenes, we can see Aunt Trixie wearing a house robe with the initials CH which likely stands for Chili Healer, the presumed owner of the rope. And while she doesn't play a part in the skit, she does know how to be a pretend granny, being one of four characters to do so, alongside Bluey, Bingo, and Muffin. Also, in the episode Queens, we can see the first instance of her so-called angry face, a face that features her staring and scowling at a subject that has particularly annoyed her. This has more or less become a running gag in the show, with her also using the face in the episodes Perfect and Rain. And speaking of angering Chili, she doesn't like being called dude, and finds it especially bothersome. However, on second thought, those two facts I just mentioned might actually be a bit important, because if she makes this face at you, that's your cue to run. But on a lighter note, on the back of the book At Home with the Healers, it states that the book is, in fact, based on the TV series Bluey. Also in the same book, it features the episode Trains, which features Bandit pushing chairs between various parts of the house, with two of the parts being the kitchen and bottom of the stairs. Considering that the kitchen is often depicted as upstairs in multiple episodes, this either implies that the house's layout is left inconsistent, making episodes much easier to produce, or that Bandit himself was constantly taking people on chairs up and down the stairs throughout the entire episode. And personally, I'd like to imagine the latter, even if that's definitely not the case. Speaking of the stairs though, in the episode Magic, Chatter Max can be seen hidden behind a plant located in the staircase, which in itself is actually part of a bigger running gag, in which the loud and energetic toy bird is often hidden, likely by Chili and Bandit as they find it quite annoying. Also, in the same episode, you can barely just see a small picture of Bandit digging up stuff in the background, which is probably related to his job in archaeology. <laughs> and lastly, for this episode, Pat appears in it for exactly 38 seconds. 
Speaking of the Labrador though, we see Pat in the episode Perfect, or rather the back of him, for just a little over 36 seconds. And further speaking of him, the scene with Bandit, Fido, and Pat's back take place in a park very similar to the one in Past the Parcel, with only a couple minor changes. Also, while talking about that episode, the ones who participated in the most Past the Parcel games are Bingo, her best friend Leela, and Chucky. <laughs> with each playing in seven games total throughout the episode. However, on the other hand, the ones who participated the least are Juniper, Sox, Honey, Chloe, Mackenzie, Lucky, and these two unnamed characters, as all eight are depicted only playing the game once. And as an additional unimportant fact for this episode, Sox is actually present for two of the past the parcel games, but doesn't participate in the final game at Bluey's party. On the subject of parties though, in the episode The Decider, all of the households have some drinks or snacks matching their team's colors. The healers and Pat have red beef jerky with cherry soda to match the maroons, huh? while Janelle has blue soda and popcorn in a blue bowl. And when the two get together, a green and yellow soda can be briefly seen. Speaking of big gatherings though, on a picture promoting her appearance at the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, Bluey was drawn in front of the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Interestingly, however, the statue was not depicted as a dog, but rather a human. However, shortly after, the picture was actually updated, now featuring the statue as a dog, which was likely done due to all the comments and theories regarding the image. On the subject of changes though, in a picture from the episode Bob Bilby, Bingo's hands are the same color as her arms. This was of course likely a mistake or oversight though. Or was it? Was she wearing gloves the whole time? However, also in Bob Bilby, we get a rare shot of the healer's garage, which is seemingly rarely used as their car is always parked outside. Some may call the garage useless because of this, but I don't think having extra space is ever a bad thing. But on the subject of the house, the 2017 pilot marks the first time both kids' bedrooms are depicted, something that wouldn't come up again all the way until the season 3 episode Bedroom, where the two kids try to sleep in separate rooms, but eventually decide to sleep together, as they were already doing in the final show. And while discussing the 2017 pilot again, a portrait depicting a dog possibly wearing some kind of army hat can be seen. This is of course, a precursor to the portrait we see in episodes such as Sticky Gecko, but this older version seems to bear a surprising resemblance to Bandit's appearance in the pilot. So although it wasn't intentional, Bandit may have originally been considered a veteran or army member of some sorts during development. On the other hand though, one thing that did eventually make it into the final show was this note in the bathroom. As funny enough, it doesn't appear in the finalized version of the pilot, aka the episode The Weeknd, but we can see a similar one in the short One Man Went to Mo. And from the looks of it, they did get most of their stuff done, but they still got that dreaded PTA meeting, frowny face doodle and all. Also, apparently the TV is having some sort of issue. But on the subject of mishaps, in early 2023, there was a strange incident involving Bluey and the popular content creator Jerma, in which an image, supposedly showing his pet dog making a cameo in the episode Hammer Barn, went somewhat viral online. However, the creator, Tunia Bark, would quickly admit it was fan-made, stating that they were surprised by how many believed it was legit. However, it should be noted that Bluey versions of Vinny and Joel, two members of the group Vine Sauce, do make appearances. So the possibilities are there. But until that happens, I think we ought to discuss more hilarious images. Some of which include the super cursed but intriguing front facing shots. Because in just about every shot in the show, characters are always depicted with their snouts facing one direction or the other, and never straightforward. But of course there are exceptions. 
such as the frames in between poses or other frames, and this single Bluey lunchbox, which made the odd choice of facing Bluey directly forward at the viewer. There's also these kind of creepy masks, both in color and black and white, so you can spend more time having them stare into your souls as you color them, I guess. However, for something a bit less creepy and more gross, the character Buddy isn't known for much, but one thing he certainly is infamous for is... picking his nose. Bruh. With one scene of him having him wipe his boogers on the slide in the episode The Creek. And well, I hope he at least washed his hands after that one, especially with our next fact in mind, as outside of his other hobby. Buddy also likes to enjoy icing, spending almost the entirety of the episode handstand trying to steal it from the kitchen. However, it eventually gets moved, leaving him with a very disappointing surprise. But considering what we just previously went over, that might be for the best. And on the subject of beloved foods, the character Marcus likes his wafer soggy. Well, I like a wafer. I like the way they go all soggy. What a monster! How dare him! However, he does appear to work with Bandit, who in the episode Hospital, takes the nickname of Telemachus. This appears to be a nod to the character from Homer's Odyssey, but was actually based on the name of a character from the sci-fi anime Ulysses 31, which in itself is inspired by the Odyssey. And speaking of shenanigans with Bandit, in the short lawnmower, he can be seen wearing these things on his ankles, which are actually sock protectors. Despite not wearing socks or, frankly, even shoes for that matter. However, Shoes do exist in their universe, as seen with Bluey and Bingo dressed as tourists in the episode Born Yesterday. No chance, love. But even with that said, Bandit has arguably done even weirder stuff. In the episode The Dump, he can be seen driving past the exact same plaza and sign five times on his way to the titular place. Hey, oh yeah. Where was I before I was- Can't reach the pedals. I drive the steering wheel. I'm really fast. Police cars. Meaning that he either has really bad directions, that every place in this area happens to look the exact same, or that this is just silly cartoon logic, so I should probably just ignore it and keep my mouth shut. However, we do see him drive by the same locations in the episode TV shop. And at the beginning of this episode, Rusty is missing the camouflage on his hat, with it instead just being one dark green color. And in the actual store, the first shot of Bluey and Bingo messing around on the cameras starts at 3.15pm, with the last shot of the cameras taking place a little after 3.19. This makes sense, as the entire time spent inside the store is just a bit over 4 minutes, meaning that it takes place in just about real time. Also, while I was working on this video, I found this box of Betty Crocker Value Pack Bluey Snack Gummies. This pack contains exactly 22 pouches, with each one having 80 calories. Therefore, if you were to consume this whole thing at once, for whatever reason, it would be a total of 1,760 calories, which is 400 more than a large Big Mac meal from McDonald's, but still more nutrients than a whole 24 pack of Bluey stickers from Party City. I think, don't quote me on that. However, if that's too much for you, there's also a 10-pack featuring 800 calories total. And if you're worried about missing the bonus game, there's no worry, as both boxes actually have the exact same bonus activity. On the topic of food though, in Bluey and Bingo's fancy restaurant cookbook, under the recipe barbecue sausages and capsicum salad with Auntie Mary's salad dressing, and under the subtitle extra things you need, they recommend, and I quote, a relaxer chair for relaxing. Also, at the beginning of the book, it states that it belongs to Romeo McFlourish, but the name is crossed out. On the other hand, at the back of the book, it states that it was printed and bound in China, and that you can find a record of it at the National Library in Australia. Which, now that I think about it, is actually useful. Especially if you want to make barbecue sausages and capsicum salad with Auntie Mary's special dress- 
And finally, in the episode Shadowlands, there was originally going to be a scene in which Bluey questioned Snickers about who Jesus is. As in, yes, Jesus Christ himself. But it was decided that the joke didn't belong, and the lines were cut from the final episode. Now, this would have basically implied that Jesus himself has a counterpart in the Bluey universe. Which from face value sounds crazy, but they do celebrate Christmas. So I guess it actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and with that, we have finished another installment of Useless Bluey Facts. Let me know if you found any of these actually interesting, or if I got anything wrong. And before I go, I want to give a special thanks to some of my followers and friends on Twitter, or X, who gave me some of these facts. But with that said, I'll be seeing y'all soon. My name's Hideaki, and until next time, have a nice day, and goodbye everyone. So, for today's art of the day, we have this wonderful drawing by Toon Fanbase from Twitter. I think they captured his look pretty well and I love it, so thank you. 